Hi, I'm Everett. Welcome back to the shop. This time what we have is a small project for a friend of mine who collects old record players. Uh, last year he asked me to make a part for one of his uh, uh, an idler wheel that goes between the drive capstan and the table itself and so what I did was I just turned one out of aluminum just sort of cut and fit to size and just built it and gave it to him never thought anything of it well turns out he needs another one because he got another record player just like it so what I, I makes me kind of kick myself that I didn't make a drawing last time and take measurements but such is life um, what I'm going to do this time is I'm going to make up a drawing after I cut this one and then I can save the drawing and whoever wants a copy of it then I'll send off a copy to you if you're looking to make yourself a, uh, an either wheel. I know not everybody collects old record players but maybe you know somebody who does. Apparently it's an old Garrard record player and the research I've done on the internet found that it's a little cost prohibitive to try to even get parts for some of these things if you can get parts even. And so he asked me to come in and make him a part just to make the record player functional. Uh, this way he can still play his records and still keep all of his parts and you know, keep the collector value of the unit as well. Uh, they get old, um, the rubber starts getting hard, and then what happens is it may have enough friction to drive the platter and spin it around and uh, keep the record spinning. But as soon as you start wanting to use the uh, mechanism for... Uh, uh, automatically loading another record in place then it just slips and causes problems. What I wound up do finding and using was um, I used a slug of uh, aluminum and uh, it would have been nice to find some oilite for the center bushing but I have some 675 bronze uh, it'll work. Um, that's what I used the same sort of thing last year for, uh, for his other idler wheel the thing is that he just knows that he needs to keep it lubed up on a regular basis. Now, as far as the, on the outside here, uh, the rubber on the outside of these old idler wheels starts getting hard, and I can see where somebody's tried actually sanding this to soften, and softening it up a bit. It didn't work. Same sort of thing I did for last year. Found a square cut O-ring. This here is actually um, off of one of the new Chrysler Eco Diesels, the V6. Uh, it's a 6821-1212-AA uh, Mopar part number if anybody's interested. Next thing we need to do is drill the center out. Make sure that it's actually drilling on center. Once I push the new bu or the bushing in the center and then remount it, that's when we're going to be doing our uh, drilling out of the center axle and then cutting the outer grooves. That way, at, on that mounting, everything will be concentric. Now the bushing center is approximately 350 thou. We're going to use a center drill to uh, work this hole and make sure that that hole is at least reasonably concentric. It's aluminum so I felt a little more brave with it. I don't know if I'd be going that far in and if it was uh, alloy steel. So 352 is pretty darn close to 9 millimeters. I don't have a metric drill bit set that big, I don't believe. Um, I don't have a 9 millimeter drill bit or anything. Uh, however, I do have an 8.7 for the fact this is just a bushing and I'm going to make the bushing to fit the hole. This will be close enough for our purposes. Three forty four, highest I got was a three forty four and a half, three forty five. So if we make our bushing to about three forty six, we'll press in and then we can uh, do the rest of the cutting. So this piece comes out.
403. Three seventy four. We're at three seventy four. We need three forty six. That means we need another twenty eight thousandths off. Three fifty. Three forty six. There we are. Need to make sure first off that our parting tool is square, mounted square, squarely, I should say. I should, I know better than to mix my adverbs and adjectives. Because I know the rules of grammar. Problem is, half the time I just don't care. Now we're going to part through a little bit further back, and that gives us a bit of a button to push with. And I'm just going to face that off after once it's in the piece of aluminum. Hmm. So it's a little, just a hair below center height. Oh, there's our, there's our little piece that's going to become our bushing. But to get it started, uh, as far as a chamfer inside the end of this, all I'm going to do is just run a Noga deburring tool a couple times through it. There we go. Now, I realize a 10-ton press is probably a little bit overkill for this. Not a bad use for an old worn out socket. There you go, that's the bottom of the hole. Now it doesn't just that look pretty. Now the inside of the wheel here is about 171, about 171 thousandths, which is about four, well, 4.35, 4.36 millimeters. Being a, uh, being a, an English uh, turntable, it was made in the 60s, so it's a little before the metric system really started taking hold there as far as I know. But, um, I mean, I think that if I remember right in the mid sixties, there is, you know, stuff being built with both. Um, but in the, what I'm going to wind up doing is I got a set of those ubiquitous red box, cheap Chinese drill bits. And I managed to find a set for a reasonable price, uh, which had one to six millimeters in uh, 0.1 millimeter increments. And one of the interesting things is like this one here, the 4.3, uh, take a measurement on it, it's actually 4.27, 4.26. The 4.4 is about 4.39, so it's just a hair shy. I mean, again, they were cheap. I ex didn't expect them to be super, super accurate. Now, the thing is, drill holes are often slightly larger than the actual drill bit itself. I'm going to start off by center drilling and then using the 4.3 and see where we're at. 
um, if I have to, if I go, you know, a few thousandths over, it's not the end of the world. I mean, it's, it's just an idler wheel running on the little shaft inside, and it, it's not, it's not going to be a problem if it's a smidge loose. So, I'm going to start by center drilling. We may find that the 4.3 drills it out just enough. 3164 uh, actually runs up to uh, what is, is 4.366 millimeters, 4.37, so that might be a smidge large for what I'm looking for. Besides, I realize I'm also doing this with digital calipers, not internal mics and such. Best I'm getting is about 4.33, 4.34. Yeah, I'll take it out a little bit bigger. Okay, the biggest reading I'm getting is about three nine four. Okay, so we're about four tenths of a millimeter large. Again, in this situation, it's not going to hurt anything. Now, as far as turning the outside to diameter. Um, the issue that I come up against, and this is part of the reason why I wish I had a, I had actually written it down and drawn a diagram last time I did one. The, the rubber itself, as it stretches on this O-ring, gets skinnier. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by bring, turning the outside down to the um, dimension that this old wheel is, and then we can do some final adjustments, um, and make the when, and then we can make the groove after that. So. Because uh, what I'd like to do is, like the last one, it's going to be about the width of these, uh, uh, the, where the ribs are. And then at the very top, there will be a lip on either side, uh, just big enough to hold this guy centered, this, uh, this band. 2.230, outside dimension to, uh, yeah, but, yeah, just a, just a hair under two and a half. Yeah, starting to look more and more like one of these things is hiding in there. 2.230. Next step is this journal here, which is 560 thou in diameter. And I did a measurement from this ridge here to that face, and it was actually 360 thousandths of an inch. The diameter of the shoulder we need is 560 thou. That's the, the bigger shoulder. We'll deal with the smaller one after. The bigger shoulder is 560 thou divided by two is 280 thou. Outside dimension or outside diameter here is 2.23 divided by that by two you have 1.115. Take the difference between the two you get 835 thousandths. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to um, only cut in 800 thou and then I'll leave the last uh, 30 thou um, for a cleanup pass on that center journal. And then we're going to come back this way by a little over 360 thousandths of an inch. So what we have now is the same length uh, or distance from the end of this journal to this face as it is from this rib to the uh, to the end of the bushing. Like on the last one, what I think I'm going to do 
is I think I'm actually going to do a little bit of um, a little bit of relief on the inside here. I think the I think they look nicer that way. It gives a nicer line. Um, it would probably function just fine without it, but I, I like to make things look good if I can. We'll take this uh, that center journal down and then do a little bit of uh, relief cutting. That's just a ten thou skim cut. We still need to go another. 20 thou or so. A little bit of a dig. Start pulling back. But, because of the chatter we're getting, I'll slow this down a little bit. Nice slow feed rate. I don't know. I actually haven't seen inside the record player itself. Uh, he said the last one I made for him worked, and I'm just making it pretty much the same way as I did the last one. Um, this little shoulder here, I'm going to, we're definitely going to have to cut that shoulder because I think that has to clear something on the inside mechanism of the machine. Now it is, well, hair over, well, 406, 407, just a hair over 400 thou. Uh, diameter and 115 thou in depth. Yeah, we're 561, 562, we're within a couple thousands. Means you need to take about 77, 78 thousandths off on radius and go inward by about 115 thousandths. 20 thou in diameter. Four oh seven. I'll take it. Uh, when this band goes on the outside, when it stretches, it gets thinner, right? So now this is just going to be a trial and error thing until I get it to the right, dimet right uh, outside diameter. I remember this from last time. <laughs> now I need to use a parting tool for this because it's also used for grooving. I don't want to make the groove too wide, but I also don't want to make it too narrow. Yeah, so we got 2.23. We want for a final outside dimension, 2.336. This is going to be a bit of fiddling and fiddling here. Uh, what I'll do is I'm going to pause the camera and I'll bring you all back in when I get to the final dimension, because I'm sure you don't want me to want to watch me do this over and over and over again. After some fitting and fiddling, I got 2.232 or within two thousandths. Um, especially considering the fact I'm taking measurements on a piece of rubber, I, I figure two thousandths is a close enough, uh, close enough tolerance. We're going to cut it off in the bandsaw because quite frankly I don't, I don't trust parting that deeply. Uh, it's liable to end badly. So from outside ridge to outside ridge, we're about 260 thousandths of an inch, 258, whatever. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to face this side and just keep facing down until this disc portion, the thick portion, is about 260 thousandths of an inch. It's got some support because it's right up against the jaws, but it's also, where it's gripping, it doesn't have a huge amount of bite. I have soft jaws in there, um, so I'm just going to have to take light cuts. You get the idea. I'll bring you back in when we're at 260. All right, we're down to thickness. You can see the back side of the bushing there poking through. So the last operation we need to perform on this thing is to recess the back face here a little bit. Um, try to get the glare off there. Recess the back face here a little bit so that this bushing, so this bushing's overall length is the correct length. It's uh, 562, 563 thousandths, basically 9 sixteenths of an inch. 
I took a measurement across here and we are about 612 uh, thousandths of an inch. Uh, so we have to take, give or take, uh, about 50 thousandths off this back side as far as depth. And then we're just going to make a nice, um, nice uh, chamfer on the in internal chamfer there to make it look nice in the same process. Kind of like what we did on the other side, only this side we're just you know, going to dress it up nicely so the bushing's the right height. And then I think we're pretty much done. to try to take the chatter marks out, and I think that looks nice. So as a final measurement, I needed to take 50 thousandths off of this side. My 50 thou gauge block will actually fit in there, and I'm getting the same measurement I had as when I had, uh, before I had taken the uh, relief cut out of the center there. We have the correct depth. We're done. Ooh, don't want to lose that. That would have been bad. So we just take our flat o-ring. I've degreased everything. Clean them up. Flat o-ring goes on, make sure it's seated in the groove, make sure the thickness of it is even all the way around, and yeah, there we go. So once again, thank you for watching, thanks for subscribing, uh, thank you for all the likes that I get on the little button, and uh, Thank you for all the comments, all you who actually are willing to join in and have a conversation. It's really fun to interact with you all. See you next time.